Maniacs, welcome back to the channel, doing another reaction. This reaction is for another Jake Weber video, and today we are going to be watching him unbox John Wayne Gacy's personal items. I don't know what to expect from this. I'm, the only thing I'm really expecting is to see a painting, because I know John Wayne Gacy did a lot of paintings when he was alive or when he was in prison. One of the ways he just kind of spent his free time and whatnot before his execution. So I'm expecting one of those, but other than that, I really don't know what to expect from this. What else would... Would someone have from John Wayne Gacy and why would someone want these things from John Wayne Gacy right John Wayne Gacy is one of those serial killers that really gets under my skin uh, every time the conversation comes up about him I freak out I love clowns but John Wayne Gacy is one of the clowns that actually used to scare me so we're gonna go ahead and dive into the video guys if you like this type of content want some more content like this I will do more Jake Weber content just hit that like button subscribe to the channel and if it's okay with Jake and if it's okay with Jake, I would love to do, uh, of course, more of these uh, style of reactions. Because I'm a big, I'm actually into true crime. I know I get emotional watching this stuff. But it's it's very, you know, hard not to do when, you know, you got a heart like mine. You, it's really hard to get through some stuff. But anyways, let's go ahead and dive into the video and give you guys my thoughts during and after the video. Today, we're taking a look at my collection of real true crime items belonging to one of America's most notorious serial killers, John Wayne Gacy. Before we do, let's get a refresher of who he is. John Wayne Gacy was a man who, on the surface, appeared to be a successful and upstanding member of society. He was a businessman, a political activist, and a respected member of his community. However, beneath this facade lurked a monster, a man who would go on to commit some of the most evil crimes in American history. Born in Chicago, John Wayne Gacy had a troubled childhood. His father was aggressive and his mother was cold and distant. When he was a teenager, that's when the strange behavior began. He enjoyed compulsive lying and stealing. But despite these warning signs, Gacy was successful and a respected member of society. He was even invited to meet the first lady, Rosalind Carter. But of course, Gacy was living a double life. In 1972, Gacy committed his first murder. Over the next six years, he killed at least 33 victims, many of whom were buried beneath the crawl space in his house. These these victims yeah. were lured in with the offer of work or money. Once they were inside, they were never seen again. Despite all the evidence, Gacy wasn't captured for years. It wasn't until the police put together that someone that was missing was last seen at his house. With that information, the case was built against him, and that's when the police found the bodies under the crawl space. So Gacy was convicted of 33 murders and sentenced to death. He spent 14 years on death row before he was finally executed by lethal injection. So while Gacy was crazy that he lasted that long before actually being sentenced to death the unbelievable why did they wait so long i i don't know maybe someone can leave a comment in the comment section and let me know why they decided to like per postpone that for as long as they did on death row he developed an interest in painting he would yes sell he things, did and that caused a lot of controversy and debate they're dark and disturbing and often featured clowns skulls and violence his most popular painting that he did behind bars was pogo the clown and i own one of them this right here is Gacy's most infamous painting. A 100% authentic self-portrait in his Pogo the Clown persona, created while waiting on death row. This real photo of him looks exactly like the painting. Pogo the Clown was an alter ego that Gacy invented for himself. He would dress up for charity events, children's birthdays, and more. Gacy was not a professional clown. He didn't earn a living from this, it was just a hobby. In hindsight, we now know that he enjoyed it for the wrong reasons. The Pogo the Clown painting features Gacy in full clown attire, and many people say that this painting radiates very dark energy. Gacy made around three to four hundred copies of this exact painting. So it's rare, but also not at the same time. I mean, it's been almost 40 years, so I'm sure the number of existing ones are just dropping. He made around 2,000. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I mean, honest to God, like, I guess I can understand someone having a passion for collecting things like this, but serial killer memorabilia, I just, I love clowns. I love, you know, Statues of clowns, you guys can see them back there. I love that shit, but owning a real painting painted up by one of the most disgusting human beings who ever walked the face of the earth, I just couldn't, I couldn't do it. 500 paintings while in jail. And we know this because the number was actually pretty documented. Poco's eyes seem to just follow you around while you watch it. His outfit is bright, colorful, and happy, which is haunting because his story is very dark. Down below is waving hand is a button that says, I'm Pogo the Clown. He's posing next to a twist of balloons with his simple kid-like signature, J.W. Gacy. The innocence and happiness that this painting gives off while knowing the disturbing mind that created it really symbolizes Gacy's twisted mind. And that's why this remains as one of the most notorious pieces of art associated 
with the serial killer. One thing that's rather random that I own are these buttons, which are replicas of the buttons that were on his clown suit. The suit now sits in the National Crime Museum, and you can see these buttons here, here, and here. Lead me to your taker. Let's make the scene. Tell it like it is. They're kind of weird buttons if you think about it. <laughs> like usually when someone yeah, you has wouldn't. a button, it just says something like, don't forget to smile. What the f*** does lead me to your taker mean? And I have this. It's a paint it yourself pogo. This and the buttons were given to me as a gift. Thank you, Cool Collectibles. Now, you may be wondering- Yeah, I think I, I actually think I have seen that guy's work on like Instagram and stuff. Uh, he does a lot of serial killer kind of merchandise. Very interesting, for sure. I. Talented, for sure. I, I gotta give him credit. Talented. Even get a hold of Casey. How did people acquire his paintings? And the answer is an art sheet. This is a replica of the sheet that people would fill out to buy a painting from Gacy while he was in prison. Original oil paintings by John Wayne Gacy. Guaranteed original and signed and numbered. This right here is his art dealer, Rick Statton. You would note which one you want. As you can see, Pogo the Clown is only $99. And nowadays, it's worth thousands. This is the cheapest one titled Skull, which you could get a single or a double for only $55. And I do have one of those that I will be showing you. Right here is the real authentic double skull that you could have purchased. $55 for this. That's pretty terrifying knowing you could pull $55 out of your pocket and get a serial killer painting in the mail. There really isn't much lore on Double School, at least that I know. Gacy was a pretty reserved and private guy, so anyone that knows the details of the Double School was probably someone that talked to him personally. Right here, you have his infamous signature on the left-hand corner. And I think that skulls are pretty creepy coming from him, knowing that there was 33 skulls under his house. This one actually has access to the back, where you could see all the information. You could tell how old it is by the yellowing of it. And right here, we have a bonus signature, yeah. John W. Gacy, Oil 601. So after you'd fill out the ones you want, you would send it in with a cashier's check. Next thing you know, in two to four weeks, you would have a John Wayne Gacy painting at your doorstep. You could even do an individual portrait. Would you get a self-portrait? Like, it's kind of crazy to know that people wanted the paintings just because he was a serial killer. Kind of crazy to know. And there's a lot of people who actually, it's one of the more recent controversies out there, actually, like with the whole Chris Watts situation. Where, where Chris Watts is being sent love letters. Like, why is this a thing? Why do people feel the need to send these sick-ass people letters, requests to get paintings, autographs? Why do they do it? It makes no sense to me. But they're out there. There are people out there who just, for some reason, really feel something for these people. I, I just, I cannot mentally understand why by Gacy? No, that'd be terrifying, I know. Of course, it seems like this is a great way to make money for Gacy. I mean, they have a whole business plan, right? But that money couldn't really get spent. He could only buy things from the commissary. So that money probably only went to cigarettes and Twinkies. You could also totally ditch this idea and just write and ask him yourself. But fair warning, you probably gotta send a picture of yourself clean, young, and shaven because he would only talk to boys that he could fantasize about. Creepy. I know. Now he did yeah. make paintings Ew, that God. weren't even available on the sheet, making them extremely rare and limited. And I have a few of them. One of those is right here, titled Dahmer Skull. A little detail, but also one to think about, is that this was called Dahmer Skull and not Dahmer's Skull, pointing to that this may represent one of the skulls that Dahmer owned and not his own. Also, Dahmer was alive when this was painted. What kind of nightmare crossover episode is this? So Gacy tried to downplay his crimes by publicly comparing himself to yes, Dahmer. Yes, he did. And pointing the finger at him. He once said something along the lines of, if a guy like Dahmer doesn't get the death penalty, then this country is twisted. As if he wasn't a killer himself. I hate well, there the fact that the guy was such a, he was so full of it. Oh, he was so full of it. Towards the end, he was making up all these lies and then getting caught on his lies and everything. And then, then he would go behind the scenes and talk shit to that person to their face and give an attitude. Yeah, oh yeah, he was not an honest guy by any means. And he certainly was pushing the uh, the whole agenda that he was completely innocent. He, he had, didn't do anything wrong. I remember like watching that interview from his sister. I think it was on Oprah Winfrey show. And she asked John, did you kill these men? And he's like, you know, some of them like one or two of them that he did and he's like when she told him straight up it's like john if you killed one or two of them you killed all of them because you just can't be going around killing people do you even hear yourself talking right now both terrible people Dahmer at least took responsibility for his crimes whereas gacy said that he was innocent and true his death. although gacy liked to hate on Dahmer publicly he must have been fascinated with him if he went on to paint this but you know what at the end of the day gacy gacy even went to his lawyer and confessed everything drunk and still denied it. Yeah, confessed everything in, in detail of what he did. If you ever watch the, um, what was it called? Uh, Conversations with a Killer or something like that. Uh, John Wayne Gacy tapes. Uh, phenomenal. 
I actually know someone that got a Dahmer school straight from Yesu. The tooth of the painting actually had a chewed off piece of skin on it, maybe symbolizing Jeffrey Dahmer's cannibalism. He actually doesn't have it anymore as his warehouse was mysteriously burned down. If you think that this is the only rare painting I have from him, you're wrong. I actually have another one that's only one of 34. Let me show you. This painting is titled Death Wish. And yes, only 34 were created. The back is actually able to be seen on this one. And as you can see, this is Death Wish number 13. Artist John Wayne Gacy. So the reason why 1975 is because Gacy apparently painted one for each of his 33 victims, with the 34th being himself. It's pretty pathetic that Gacy thinks of himself as a victim. At least one of these was burned years ago in a bonfire, along with other paintings. As you can see, it's a reaper, and the staff is getting stabbed through his skull, with the end of the blade having drips of blood on it, painted in the same bloody color as J.W. Gacy. I have to say that I find this one the most interesting. I'm not sure how rare Dahmer skull is, but we know how rare this one is, and the fact that we don't know how many exist today. That's currently everything that I, for some reason, and own and I take well care of them by putting them in nah. museum glass and preserving their history mind you you should never sympathize with serial killers they're terrible people and deserve no respect yes I do have these but that's because they're a piece of history and by having them and showing them we can learn more about Gacy's time in prison if you guys want to see more videos like this let me know make sure to check out my second channel Jake Weber live and shop the merch 30% off everything Love you I mean yeah I mean, at the end of the day, I guess I could see your points to that. Um, yeah, you're just maintaining history. I, I get it. I do. I still, it's the concept of, you know, keeping them in your house is a different thing. Like, it's one thing to maintain history. Maybe donate to them, to, donate to it like a museum or something. And they'll definitely put it up on display for sure. But, you know, to keep that stuff is next level. But I, I agree with him. He, he's completely right when he, when he says that you should just show no respect or any ounce of remorse or... Um, sympathy for any of these people because they are monsters. They do not, they do not deserve your sympathy. They do not deserve your your fan mail. They don't deserve your appraisal. They don't deserve anything like that. One of the reasons why the whole and obviously I'm not saying she's on the level of a John Wayne Gacy or a Jeffrey Dahmer or anything like that. I'm not even trying to compare. But the whole like Gypsy Rose situation right now where people are getting extremely pissed off that she's treating this like her rise to fame right now because she is somebody who yes may have been tortured as a kid and you know people feel so bad for her and stuff but the fact of the matter is she's also kind of taking advantage of this whole situation and making it come off like she should be a a superstar because of it now and i just it, it does yeah it does. i can see where it rubs a lot of people the wrong way there's a lot of people who are just annoyed and pissed off and thinks that you know thinking that the public is trying to glorify a a murder right not a murderer but like a murder she was involved with the death of her mom. I don't know every detail. I don't know her in person, so I really can't start, you know, breaking her down psychologically. But there is something off about that. And I don't think we should be, you know, appraising, praising somebody who did something like this. I, I, I do not think that's something that people should be promoting at all. So, okay, so that was uh, him unboxing some stuff from John Wayne Gacy's personal collection. Very, very interesting. Most of them, I know all of it was all paintings, so he had nothing else besides paintings there, which it makes sense. I don't think a lot of personal stuff from John Wayne Gacy was kept, not to my knowledge. And if it was, it's in a museum. Yeah, it's been a while since I've watched Jake Weber. I'm kind of glad I actually got a chance to revisit. That video wasn't that long, but I, I still hope you guys enjoyed me just talking amongst it and giving you guys a commentary over that. When it comes to true crime and serial killer stuff, just having a t-shirt that says, you know, I watch true crime, that's fine. But, like, I love John Wayne Gacy shit. I love Jeffrey Dahmer stuff. I do not understand. I don't know, I don't know guys. Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What would, uh, do you think collecting true crime memorabilia is interesting? If not, I want to hear your opinions. And, again, hit the like button. I'll do more Jake Weber stuff. And subscribe, and I'll check you out in the next video, guys. So take care.